Now let's understand how Spring Boot works. Now whenever you are creating the Spring Boot project and we saw many times as well when we are creating the Spring Boot project, everything is automatically done. Everything works like a magic. You don't have to do anything. But actually it's not magic. Everything is a code. Everything is a programmatically written code. And all those things are added programmatically based on the different configurations that you add in your project. Now you may say what configurations? I didn't add anything. But yeah, you would be adding something and based on that, the configuration will take place. So let's see how the Spring Boot works internally. So whenever you're creating a Spring Boot project, it has the spring.factories added to the meta.inf folder. And all the configuration, all the jar files required are mentioned there. So whenever you add any properties or any configuration and it matches with the Spring Factories, it tries to add that configuration to it. So based on the different configurations that you add or based on the different dependencies that you, dependencies that you add, the different configuration takes place internally. So if I show you, if you go to the external libraries here and if you go to the auto configure, okay, and if you open here in the meta inf folder, you can see that there is a spring.factories. So if you open this, you can see that all those configurations are added here. Now if I open one of the class, okay, I'm just opening one of the class that is JPA repositories auto configuration. Now you can see that here, there are different annotations available. Okay. Now based on all these annotations, all the configuration takes place. So suppose if you are creating a Spring Boot project and in that Spring Boot project, you have just added the dependency of a web, nothing else. Then only Spring Web will be added in your project. That configuration only will be added in your project. Nothing else will be added. And if you want to work with the JPA, then you need to add the dependency of the JPA and you need to give some properties to make sure that the configuration will work. So all those things, how Spring Boot will know, right? So you can see Spring Boot will know all those things based on the annotations provided here. So this particular class JPA repositories auto configuration is to configure the JPA whatever you have added to configure your application to connect with your database. Now this will only work when it will fulfill all these conditions. You can see that it has a condition that conditional on bean that is data source dot class. So that means it should have the bean data source dot class available in the bean factory. You can see there is a condition on conditional on class. So it should find the JPA repository dot class in the class path. Then only it will add the configuration that is conditional on missing bean. It should not be having the missing beans. Okay, condition on property, it should have these properties available. So you need to define the spring.data.jpa.repositories. Okay, so when all these conditions are met, the auto configuration will happen. And any of the things are missing, you will get the error. So we'll see that as well when we are implementing the JPA, I will show you that how you will get the errors when you have not configured everything properly. So whatever the minimum things it needs, if you have, if you give those minimum things, then it will auto configure everything for you. Otherwise it won't configure. It will throw that these are the things missing. So all these things, it will get to know from all these conditional classes and conditional annotations provided here for all the different configurations. Everything is defined this way only. And based on this, the configuration will happen. So there is no magic. All these are conditional beans and conditional implementations everything is programmatically added to your project. Now this is something how the different auto configurations and how the different dependencies are added in your project. But how about running your application, how it works. So for that, let's see if you go to the, let me close each and everything. And if you go to the Spring Boot application, okay, this is something that is very important annotation that is Spring Boot application and there is a method that is spring application dot run. These two things help you to create your spring boot application. Now what it will do is if you open this spring boot application, you can see that it ideally does main three things over here. So whatever the configurations are added in your project, load those configuration first, then do the auto configuration for all those configurations and whatever the extra beans or components or anything that you have added, load all those things as well. So this is the task of this annotation. So you can see that first of all, it will do Spring Boot configuration. So all these configurations have been added. So if I open this, you can see that it will check for all the at the configurations. So any class annotated with at the configuration is been used for configuration purposes in this Spring Boot. So once you have all those configurations, it will do the auto configurations. So enable auto configuration annotation is used to do all the auto configurations for all the dependencies and all the different configurations been added in our project. 
So if you open this, you can see that it will do auto configuration package and you can see that it will import this class and all those configurations are there. You can use all those things. And if you want to exclude any particular configurations, you can exclude. You can see that there is a property available, exclude and exclude name. So that means if you want to exclude anything, you can provide in the exclude annotations. So that means you have added the dependency of JPA, but you don't want the auto configuration of the JPA. You want to do everything manually. You can go ahead and do that. You just need to exclude the auto configuration and do everything manually by adding the different configurations, adding the different class and annotating with at the configuration. So that's how generally it would be. So you can see everything is done for you by default with this one annotation. But if you want to exclude and do manually, you have the option to do that. Now, once everything is loaded, your run method will run. Okay. And this run method will help you to start your application. So if you go towards this run method, if you open this run method and let me go to this run method where we pass each and everything. Okay. So this is the run method that is going to run and it will return the configurable application context. So at the end, it will return the application context, which is configurable and it will start your application. And you can see it is taking the different variable arguments here. So you can see that this method, first thing what it will do is it will bootstrap the application context. You can see there is a method create bootstrap context. So it will first create the application context for you. So whatever the context it has to create, right? By adding all the different beans into the IOC container and everything, everything will be added and the, your context will be created. And you can see that after that, there are different things. You can see configure headless properties, all the different configurations will be added. And if there are any listeners added in your application, it will get all those listeners and attach to your application. And you can see after that, it will take the argument. So if there are any arguments added, right? Whenever you are starting your application, you will be adding the different arguments. So if there are any arguments, all those arguments will be added, collected and will be added in your application context into, into your configuration. And once everything is added, it will refresh your context to get everything into the updated context. And also it will do one thing is whenever it's creating the application context for you, it will also check what type of context it is. So if you are adding the web dependency in your application, that means it will end up creating the web application context, right? Because you are creating the web application and web application context needs to be created and that needs to be deployed in your embedded server as well. So all those steps are added. If you are not creating a web application, you are just creating the terminal application. Those type of context will be added. So there are different types of context available based on the dependencies that you have added and the configuration that you have added, the different context type will be created and will be attached in your application. And after that, if it's a web application, it will also create the Tomcat embedded servlet context container that container will be created and your context will be attached to that container. So that means your context can run on the embedded server provided. We will talk more about the embedded server later, but whatever the embedded server has been configured for your application, that particular servlet container will be used to create your application and the context will be attached to it. So you can see that it is nothing magic. It is based on all the configurations and dependencies we add, whatever the dependencies that we are adding here from the spring dot factories it will do the configuration and based on the classes added based on the configurations added in the application dot properties all those configuration all those auto configuration will happen in a project and based on this at the red spring boot application annotation it will first try to get all the configurations it will enable all those configurations and it will scan for all the packages to get all the different beans available and everything will be ready for you to use in the ioc container Okay. As we talked about IOC container earlier, every beans will be there in the IOC container for you to use. And whenever the run method is called, all those beans are being used to create your context. Your context is defined based on the different dependencies, either it's a web context or a normal application context or anything. And based on that, whatever the embedded server is defined for your application, that embedded server container will be used to attach the context to that container to start your application. Everything easily defined. Everything is defined within the run method itself. You can go through that easily and you'll be able to understand each and everything. So there is no magic at all.